Ephesians chapter 5 submission in the church in union with Christ 5 colon 1 dash 21 walk in love toward one another 5 colon 22 dash 33 Christ love the church like a husband is to love his wife 5 colon 1 be ye therefore followers of God as dear children be ye therefore since the father for Christ's sake hath forgiven you for 32 be followers of God as dear loving trusting gracious and obedient children Paul continues telling us what to put off, for 22, now that we are saved, and renew our minds, for 23, and put on the new man, for 24, and live in a worthy way as ambassadors representing our Lord Jesus and Father God. 2. And walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. We are to walk with sacrificial love in a way that benefits others and be a sweet-smelling fragrance to God, just as Christ has loved us and gave himself for us. 1 colon 7, 13. His son's sacrifice on Calvary was the ultimate sweet-smelling sacrifice to God, Rom. 5 colon 8, we love others when we help them believe the true gospel that Christ paid the sin debt for all mankind on the cross as our substitute and rose again because his blood payment satisfied the Father who could now give us his son's righteousness, his spirit, his life, and declare us justified by faith, Rom. 3 colon 22-26, 424, 25, 5 colon 1, 10, 1 core, 15 colon 3, 4, 2 core, 5, 21, gal, 220. We love others when we do God's will and help them to understand Pauline sound doctrine and the mystery, 1 Tim, 2 colon 4, to be forgiven everyone must believe who Jesus Christ is, God in the flesh, John 1 14, 10 30, and what he did, 1 core, 15 colon 3, 4, there is the first death of the body and then there is the second death when the eternal soul experiences eternal torment in the lake of fire, Matt. 25 colon 41, Revelation 20 verses 14 and 15. We are a spirit and a soul and we have a body. On the cross, Jesus Christ said I thirst, John 19 verse 28, because Christ experienced the second death for us, so we do not have to. What Christ accomplished on Calvary made the Father's eternal purpose possible. Christ paid with his blood and died for the sins of both heaven and earth believers so the Father could give both groups his Son's spirit. Since the Son sacrificed himself for us, for love's sake we should be willing to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, Rom. 12 colon 1. At salvation we receive his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, 316, 17. Jesus Christ wants to live his life in and through us. He is the treasure in earthen vessels, 2 core. 4 colon 7, it is the life also of Jesus, in our mortal flesh, body, 2 core. 4 11, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1 verse 27. With him in us, we have something to offer God and others. We edify one another in love, but he lives his life through us, Rom. 12 colon 1, 2, so he receives the glory. 3, but fornication, and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints, for neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Paul said, do not even let what the unbelievers are doing be mentioned among you, because that is not becoming of saints. Then he lists sins prevalent in the world. We are to hate what God hates, Rom. 12 colon 9, fornication is any sexual relation outside of marriage. All uncleanness includes all forms of immorality. Covetousness is wanting what others have. Paul doesn't want these things even to be named among the believers, because they are not who we are now. It is not fitting that we behave unbecoming to others. Instead, let us be thankful we are members together. Being a believer is serious business. We are not to spend our time in filthiness, as Paul just mentioned, or in foolish talking, nor joking around, because that is not going to get God's will done. Paul is not objecting to humor, just to unsuitable and unclean jesting. We are to help save souls from going to hell. 5. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, fornicator, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. 
7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Paul lists the type of acts that will not be allowed in God's kingdom. We are not to act like the lost sinners we were, but like the spirit-filled believers we are in Christ. Do not be partakers with the children of disobedience and take part in the evil deeds of the lost. God hates spiritual fornication more than physical fornication because it is idolatry, putting something else in the place of God or not believing and obeying what God said. There are two other places in Paul's letters when he gives lists of sinful behavior, Gal. 5 colon 19-21, 1 Cor. 6 colon 9-11, compare it with Revelation 21 verse 8. The unsaved have no part in the kingdom of God and of Christ. Paul wants us to decide not to behave like the lost. We should not let someone deceive us with vain words. An example of a child of disobedience is Cain, while Abel is an example of an obedient child. We cannot come up with our own theology. Cain did that, he did it my way. He approached God his own way and he is now burning in hell which will be cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20 verses 14 and 15. Cain's sacrifice of the fruit and vegetables that he grew was not accepted. But Abel believed what God said and offered the best lamb in his flock to God, because without shedding of blood is no remission or forgiveness of sins, Heb. 9.22 Abel's blood sacrifice was a representation of what Christ would do, was accepted by God, Heb. 11 colon 4, God took out his wrath against Adam's and man's sin on the innocent lamb, not on Abel. Cain murdered his brother. Abel was in the heart of the earth for 4,000 years before paradise was moved to the third heaven, 2 Cor. 12 colon 4, Abraham was gathered to his people, Genesis 25 verse 8, such as Abel and Noah who were there before him, Heb. 11 colon 7, 40. There are really only these two kinds of people today, those who think they can do things their own way and those who are saved God's way. We are not going to be deceived into thinking that we can receive the Spirit of the Son of God just any way. We are not going to be like Cain, who did it his way, we are going to be like Abel who did it God's way. If God said it, we believe it. We are going to be obedient to the Word of God rightly divided. If God said Paul is our apostle, we believe it. Rom. 11.13, we do not listen to the wisdom of men or women, we believe what God said in the King James Bible. Do not be deceived by any man's meaningless vain words, powerless to save or please God. When Christ was on earth he told the false religious leaders, ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it, John 8 verse 44. Real life is not what we see on television. In the spiritual and physical realm there is a battle going on between God's people and Satan's people, for souls. God wants to save souls and is urgently pleading for people everywhere to trust in his son's sacrifice and believe what he said. The wrath of God is coming on the children of disobedience that refuse to believe the gospel of their salvation. The wrath of God will be dispensed according to their deeds at Christ's great white throne judgment according to Paul's gospel, Acts 13 verses 38 and 39, wrong. 3 colon 21 dash 28, 4 colon 5, 5 colon 1. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel, wrong. 2.16 there are degrees of punishment, Rom. 2 colon 6, and of rewards. Those who do not have the life of the Son in them are not in the book of life, Phil. 4 colon 3, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20 verse 10. The wrath of God, 5 colon 6, is eternal torment in the lake of fire, 2 Thess. 1 colon 9, Paul warns us not join with them by doing what they are doing. 8 For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. 9 For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth winky face. 10 Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. In the past, we were sometimes in darkness, dead to God, like the disobedient unsaved, Acts 26 verse 18, but now, we are children of light in the Lord, so act like it. Behave as children of light so we can produce fruit. Paul puts into the parenthesis three the fruit of the Spirit that are naturally produced by having the light of the Lord Jesus Christ in us. The fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, Gal. 5 22, 23. 
Do good, write and speak the truth, for these fruit are what is acceptable unto the Lord. Believers will receive a reward at the judgment seat of Christ for having fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit doing good things through us. Those who do not have fruit will suffer loss of reward. When we produce this fruit is it because the new man is operating in us, we have put on who we are in Christ and are allowing Christ to live through us. Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect, will of God, Rom. 12 colon 1, 2. This is how we produce behavior that is acceptable to God. 4. Love sake we act like who we are with Christ in us and prove what is acceptable to the Lord, it is acceptable to the Lord to be a Pauline believer. 2 Cor. 6 colon 11 dash 13, dot, 11 and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 12 For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. 13 But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Light exposes what the darkness conceals. Light dispels darkness. Evil is revealed by light. For it is a shame even to speak of the things which are done of them secretly. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, John 8 verse 12, and He is in us. Light reproves, rebukes, and reveals the unfruitful works of darkness, just like turning on the light in the house identifies the pests and cockroaches that scurry into their hiding places. We are told again not to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them by speaking the truth of God's word, the right verses, that exposes Satan's lies and wrong deeds. Shine the light on what is wrong, so others may be convinced of their sins and realize their need for the Savior. 14 Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Paul is possibly quoting ISA. 60 colon 1 4, but applies it to the body of Christ. Awake and start serving God and Christ will give you light. The light comes from Christ giving us understanding of his word so we can serve him and produce the fruit of his spirit which is acceptable unto the Lord. Unbelievers are dead to God, but believers can be asleep and act like the dead unbeliever by not serving God. False doctrine can keep a believer asleep. Don't be surprised if the lost live like the lost, they cannot change their conduct. Only God can do that through the light of his word after they are saved. The only way to quicken, make alive, someone that is spiritually dead is to believe the gospel for today and receive his spirit. 316, 17, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. However, people can also be asleep to what God is doing now and need to be awakened. Paul says that people who just want to serve themselves are functionally dead to God. She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. 1 Tim 5 colon 6 The man in 1 Corinthians 5 verse 5 was interested in immoral pleasure and not in serving God either. Believers can be carnal and live like the lost and useless to God. We are not to be entangled with the affairs of this world and not working for God. Sinful man is not going to solve the world's problems. We are not going to prevent the tribulation from coming. Many believers have been lulled asleep by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, 414. They have been deceived into following another Jesus, Christ's earthly ministry, not his ministry from heaven, another spirit, legalism, not grace, and another gospel, either the gospel of the kingdom or a mixed gospel, 2 Cor. 11 colon 3, 4. We must help the believers who are mixing Peter and Paul gently and patiently. I recently tried to help a King James Bible defender to understand the Bible he was defending. He asked me if he was an enemy of the cross. I said that I thought he was just ignorant like I used to be. He didn't want to hear any more. People who are ignorant of Christ's message through Paul are enemies of the cross of Christ. Phil 3.18 He was a scorner, not a wise man. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee, rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee, PROV. 9.8 We are to try twice to help others to understand the mystery, Titus 3 verse 10. Then separate from them and false teachers. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark, name, them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, in Romans, and avoid them, Rom. 16, 17, 18. Still, 
Once we are awakened to the truth, we need to share it with others. Paul instructs us that any thought that does not line up with the truth of God's word is to be cast down and brought into submission to Christ. We can say, that's not right. 15 See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. 16 Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. 17 Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. First we awake, then Christ gave us light. 514 And now we can see and be sure to walk circumspectly. We are to make sure that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise being aware of what is going on around us and keeping our ears open to the truth. A fool is someone who does not, a, believe that there is a God, PSA. 14 colon 1, b, doesn't read the Bible rightly divided every day, c, does not serve God but only cares about themselves. Reading the Bible is redeeming the time and using it wisely, buying it back. But, people can be deceived as if they are not studying the Bible God's way by rightly dividing. 2 Tim 2.15 We must divide or separate what God said to the body of Christ who will live in heaven, Romans to Philemon, from the rest of the Bible which is to the earthly kingdom believers but for our learning, Rom. 15.4 One main reason why replacement and covenant theology is wrong is because God is not finished with Israel yet. And so all, believing, Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Shaun the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, Jesus Christ at his second coming, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, God will not change his mind from keeping the promises he made to Israel's fathers, Rom. 11 26, 29, 18 And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, we are to understand what the will of the Lord is and do not be drunk with wine, false doctrine. Excess wine leads to drunkenness, but be filled with the Spirit. Wine in the Bible is false doctrine. False doctrine is following Peter, when God said that Paul is our apostle, Rom. 11.13, or mixing Peter and Paul. Peter spoke the truth for Israel. The truth is that being Pentecostal is being drunk with false doctrine. In the past, many of us were confused by pastors who wrongly taught that the body of Christ began in Acts 2 on Pentecost, instead of in Acts 9 with Paul's salvation. Once we understand that both the dispensation of grace and the body of Christ began in Acts 9 then the Bible becomes so much easier to understand and seeming contradictions disappear. I was a Christian for 25 years before I came to the knowledge of the truth of the mystery, 1 Tim. 2 colon 4, wine is false doctrine, being drunk on the spirit of the vain religious system. In the future, the great whore, the false one world religion under Antichrist, that sitteth upon many waters, the apostate city of Jerusalem surrounded by a sea of people, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, spiritual adultery or idolatry, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, false doctrine, Revelation 17 verse 2. How can we be filled with the Spirit? His Spirit in us and His Word are two different things. Ephesians 5 verse 18 and Colossians 3 verse 16 are sister verses that emphasize two different things, one the Spirit and the other His Word respectively. Both are needed for the Spirit of the living Lord Jesus in us uses the living Word to renew or reprogram our minds so we are moved to serve Him. For 23, Rom. 6 17, 18, 8 11. His word works effectually in us who receive it in our minds and believe it in our hearts to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Gal. 5 22, 23. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because, when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe, one thus. 2.13. His Spirit in us is the very presence of God in us. 1 Tim. 3.16. We have received His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. 3.16.17. We are filled with His Spirit daily as we renew our minds. 4.23. With God's Word rightly divided. We must have His Spirit. 1 Cor. 2.14. And rightly divide the Word of Truth to understand the Bible. To be filled with the Spirit of God means to be controlled by His Word, to live the way God instructs us to. His Spirit in us uses His Word to program our minds so we operate as we should. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, 
teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Colossians 3 verse 16. Paul said that the grace of God teaches us how to live. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus 2 verses 11 and 12. Dot. 19 Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. What does being filled with the Spirit look like? In the next several verses, Paul shows us what being filled with the Spirit looks like. Understanding His Word makes us overflow with joy and singing with melody in our hearts to the Lord. Singing together unites us. We are to have harmony and be of one accord among ourselves in the body of Christ. Spiritual songs are the overflow, fruit, of someone who is filled with the Spirit. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs that are rich in the Word of God and sound doctrine can also edify us as we sing together. It is important that the hymns are true to the Pauline instructions to us in the body of Christ from Christ. For such music soothes our souls. 20 Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Godhead is mentioned here and elsewhere in the Bible, Matt. 28 colon 19, Rom. 120, 2 Cor. 13 14, Colossians 2 verse 9, 1 John 5 verse 7. Be thankful for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to be constantly grateful together as a team to God. When we were wrong dividers, many of us had a long list of requests to God, but now our prayers primarily consist of thanking the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for all they have done, do, and will do. 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting means yielding. To yield or not to yield is a choice we make. God gave us free will for our salvation and sanctification. Paul says every member of the body of Christ is to submit to one another. When we have love for each other and thankfulness to God is a sign that we are saved. We treat everyone with respect knowing that every member has Christ's spirit in them. We are all so blessed to be part of the Father's eternal plan. Be a loving, helpful group. We worship and adore him who gave the Redeemer and him that redeemed us. We do this in the fear of God, with holy respect for God. We reverence God for saving us, giving us his Son's Spirit in us, so the Father can adopt us as his dear children to himself, and gives us his instruction through Apostle Paul in Romans to Philemon. 22 Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as unto the Lord. 23 For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. 24 Therefore as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Wives are to voluntarily submit or yield to their own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife just as Christ is the head of the church. We practice submitting to the Lord as we let our husbands make the final decisions for our families. The husband is our head because Eve was in transgression, Genesis 3 verse 16, 1 Tim 2 14, originally Adam and Eve were to be co-regents and rule as king and queen, Genesis 1 verses 26 and 27. But now the husband is to rule over the woman. The woman was made to be her husband's help meet, his complementary life partner, Genesis 2 verse 18. Notice, it is not all men only her husband. Generally, the woman has the dominion in the home, Titus 2 verse 5. For the sake of order, it is good to have a chain of command among equals. The husband is the head of the wife, just like Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the savior of the body of Christ. The church is subject to Christ and obeys what he has told us. Just like the church is subject to Christ, so let the wife be subject to her husband in everything. Paul is speaking about submission in relationships, wives to husbands, and the church to Christ. The principle of headship keeps order among equals, the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God, 1 Cor. 11 colon 3 the body of Christ should be subject to Christ just like a wife is to be to her husband in everything. 25 Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Husbands are to love their wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. 1 Thess. 3.13 Paul calls the church in it. 
Paul never refers to the church as a bride, but as the one new man, 215, the a perfect man, 413. The body of Christ is a he, not a she. Christ is the head of the body of Christ. If we do not realize the body of Christ is a he as the one new man, 215, and not a she, then we may miss other right doctrinal applications in Paul's letters. Jesus Christ is a he, a man, and the church is his body. For example, the body of Christ is the he in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7. And now ye know what, are gathering together at the rapture end of the dispensation of grace, 2 colon 1, withholdeth that he, man of sin, might be revealed in his time, the seventieth week of Daniel. 7 for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he, the body of Christ, f. 215, who now letteth, now holds back, hinders, will let, hold back, obstruct, until he, the body of Christ, the one new man, f. 215, be taken out of the way, are gathering together to meet the Lord in the air. 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. 9, even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. 2 Thess. 2 colon 6-10, Wives and husbands can only fulfill their roles with the Spirit of God in them. When the Titanic sank, it was women and children into the lifeboats first. So I think women should be happy that all they have to do is submit. 26 That he, Christ, might sanctify and cleanse it, the church, with the washing of water by the word, as Lord Jesus Christ washes the church with the water of his word, we are cleansed. Christ told the twelve, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you, John 15 verse 3. It is Christ that does the washing of the church, with the word, not the husband. Each member of the body of Christ is washed by Jesus Christ directly as we study his word. His spirit gives our spirit spiritual understanding. This is how we have the mind of Christ, one core. 216, our minds are washed, regenerated, and renewed so that we can think and act like him, Rom. 12 colon 2, Titus 3 verses 5 and 6. We need daily brainwashing and renewal because of the world in which we live, our sinful flesh who is lurking in our mortal bodies, and to be able to stand against Satan. It is good for us to be brainwashed, reprogrammed, to have our minds renewed by his. 27 that he, Christ, might present it, the church, to himself a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. It is his word that washes us, and makes us holy without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Christ gave himself as past tense, 525, in the present he is sanctifying and cleansing the church with the washing of water by the word, 526. So that in the future Jesus Christ might present the church to himself a glorious church without spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, holy and without blemish, 527. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard these verses taught wrong. Many pastors wrongly teach that the husband is to cleanse the wife with the word, when the Bible clearly says that Christ cleanses the church with his word. There is nothing wrong with husbands and wives reading and studying the Bible and learning together. In fact, for the husband to do Bible studies with their wife is a very wonderful, loving, and profitable use of time. But each one should also study the Bible independently with help of his Holy Spirit. We are to study to show ourselves approved unto God. 2 Tim 2.15 It is Jesus Christ who is sanctifying the church, not the husband. After we receive our glorified bodies, and when all impurities have been burned off us at judgment seat of Christ, then the whole church will be presented to Christ by himself without spot, or wrinkle, or any such defect, and will be holy and without blemish. The body of Christ members are his workmanship. 2.10.28 So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Men ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Loving your wife is loving yourselves, because we are one by union. 29 For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church, no man so far ever hated his own flesh. He nourishes it with good food and thereby cherishes himself. Just like the Lord cherishes the church and nourishes thee it with the spiritual food of his word, 
full of nutrients. 30 For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. This is just as Eve was made by God of Adam's rib, Genesis 2 verses 23 and 24. The church is already in a very intimate union is with our head, and joint heirs with him, Rom. 817, we are spiritually joined with Christ and have become his flesh and bone, just like a man unto his wife. We are one with Christ and cleaved to him. Christ, our head, is attached to his church, which is his body. 31 For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. 32 This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Paul is not just talking about marriage, but is revealing the mystery of Christ and the church by an analogy. The fact that a man would be joined to his wife and become one flesh was not a secret, it was revealed in Genesis 2 verse 24. But the mystery of the union between Christ and the church, the relationship between our head and his body, was only revealed through Paul. We are one with him. For this cause is that the body is spiritually united or joined to the head, Christ. The help meet is a helpful companion and life partner who works in concert with her husband. She is complex, fascinating, and remarkable. The man is also incredible and thrives on responsibility he enjoys being her provider protector and paramour, lover. He is strong and she has endurance. He cherishes her and nourishes her. He is the hero and she is the heroine. But Paul says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Christ is incredible and he thinks the church is remarkable. The body of Christ is joined to our head, Christ. We have an intimate spiritual union and made one with our Lord Jesus Christ permanently the moment we are saved because His Spirit is in us, 1 Cor. 6 17, 12 13, Gal. 3 27, 28. Paul uses the marriage analogy three times, 1. Believers are dead to the law and married to Christ, Rom. 7 colon 1 4, 2. Paul wants to present us to Christ as a doctrinally chaste virgin, 2 Cor. 11 colon 2, 3, and our union as a wife with her husband, F. 5 colon 25 dash 33. Israel is individually born again when they have his spirit, Acts 2 verse 38, 1 Peter 1 verse 23, but they must endure to the end, his second coming, for their national salvation when they receive their glorified bodies. When on earth Jesus Christ said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder, Matt. 19 colon 5, 6. The term bride of Christ never appears in the King James Bible. Paul wants to present the body of Christ as a doctrinally chaste virgin to Christ. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. 2 Cor. 11 colon 2, 3. In prophecy Jesus Christ has a different role with Israel. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, Matt. 915 Mark 2 verse 19 Luke 5 verse 34 John 1 verse 31 and believing Israel is the bride for they will rule together on earth just as Adam and Eve were supposed to rule together he that hath the bride is the bridegroom John 3 verse 29 still the nation of Israel became God's wife under the old covenant ja 2 colon 1 2 the Lord was married to Israel ja 314. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called, ISA. 54 colon 5. But Israel continually committed spiritual infidelity, so God gave her a bill of divorcement, ISA. 50 colon 1, Ja. 3 colon 8, Hos. 1 colon 2, God was always faithful to Israel and promised to betroth the wife again that was forsaken for a moment, as his virgin bride, ISA. 54.6-8 Redeemed Israel will not only love and obey God, she will not remember her paramours or idols anymore, Hose. 2.14-23 Jesus Christ will be spiritually married to his wife Israel again, because with his indwelling spirit according to the new covenant, Ja. 31 colon 31 34, Ezekiel 36 verses 24 to 28, Heb. 
8 colon 8 dash 10, the remnant will be a virgin. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. Revelation 19 verse 7. The Lord will betroth thee unto me forever. Yeah, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. Hosea 2 verses 19 and 20. Redeemed Israel will be gathered and joined or married to the restored land and the kingdom and never be uprooted again. ISA 62 colon 4. God will move his headquarters onto the new earth and be Emmanuel, God with us. Revelation 21 verses 1 and 2, 9 to 14. The four and twenty elders, Revelation 5 verse 14, are the twelve apostles and leaders of the twelve tribes. But God will also have a Jerusalem in heaven, John 1 verse 51. God loves the body of Christ, just as much as he loves his bride, redeemed Israel. We need to be careful that we are worshiping Christ according to the revelation of the mystery given to Paul, Rom. 1625, and not according to his earthly ministry to Israel, 2 Cor. 516. The body of Christ is not spiritual Israel for God has only temporarily interrupted his program with her and will resume his prophecy program with them when he has ended our mystery program with the rapture, Rom. 11 colon 25 dash 27. Christ will use the Israel of God with his spirit in them according to the new covenant to reclaim and subdue the earth and rule over the Gentiles. Christ will use the body of Christ in the heavenly places to judge, the good, angels, 1 Cor. 6 colon 3. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself, Phil. 321. Dot. 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Paul gave instructions for marriage for the body of Christ. Likewise, Peter, as head of the believing remnant, also gave marriage advice in the circumcision epistles, 1 Peter 3 verses 1 to 7. God wants husbands to love their wives as themselves, and wives are to make sure that she reverences, exalts, honors, adores, respects, admires her husband. Sarah called her husband Lord, Genesis 18 verse 12. We are to honor and obey our husbands. When I reverence my husband as the head of our family, he rises to the occasion and fulfills his role. He wants me to be a happy wife. He loves me unconditionally. He has confidence in me. He knows I can do my part and care for him, the children, and the home. I can trust him to take care of the finances, pay the bills, fix things in the house and yard. So I can be free to do what I love, studying the Bible and writing books to edify the body of Christ. My husband knows that I will still do my duty as a wife, mother, friend, and a homemaker. This is the headship principle. But my husband is not my savior. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. When we in the body of Christ exalt Him as our God, our head, everything else falls into place. He is at the right hand of the Father, where the heavenly Jerusalem and heavenly M.T. Zion are. He kept the law perfectly, so now with His Spirit in us we can too. We are blessed to be in the church, the body of Christ, that He loves, nourishes, and cherishes unconditionally. Onward Christian Soldiers Sabine Baringold, 1834-1924 One Onward, Christian Soldiers, Marching as to War With the Cross of Jesus going on before Christ, the Royal Master Leads against the foe Forward into battle See his banner go Refrain, Onward, Christian Soldiers Marching as to War With the Cross of Jesus going on before Two at the sign of triumph, Satan's host doth flee. On, then, Christian soldiers. On to victory, hell's foundations quiver. At the shout of praise, brothers, lift your voices. Loud your anthems raise, refrain. 13,756. Three like a mighty army moves the church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided. All one body we. One in hope and doctrine, one in charity, refrain. For onward, then, ye people, join our happy throng, blend with ours your voices in the triumph song. Glory, laud, and honor, unto Christ the King. This through countless ages men and angels sing, refrain. 
Ephesians chapter 6, the church is to be one army of soldiers, 6 colon 1 dash 9, the training ground of the member of the body of Christ. 6 colon 10 dash 20, our spiritual warfare, our enemy, our weapons, and our armor. 6 colon 21 dash 24, Paul's farewell and concluding remarks. The Christian life is not a playground, it is a battleground. Satan has a policy of evil for this dispensation of grace and he wants to conceal it. We are on enemy territory. Every member is called to be a soldier in this army. Soldier training begins in childhood and continues on in the workplace. The battle is spiritual and so is our equipment. Faith is the means by which we appropriate each piece of spiritual armor. We take it by faith that we are saved and that God is working in us by His Spirit using the whole Word of God rightly divided. As we stand our ground, 6 11, 13, 14, we may soon find ourselves on the front lines. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles, tricks, of the devil, 6 11. Satan hates this message and wants to conceal it. Stand in Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Don't be moved. From Christ's ministry to his heavenly group, to Christ's ministry on earth, from mystery to prophecy, from grace to law, from Paul to Peter, from Acts 9 to Acts 2, comma, from the body of Christ to believing your spiritual Israel, from walking by faith, Romans to Philemon, to walking by sight, Bible all to me, from the word of God to human wisdom, from believing our blessed hope to thinking you're going through the tribulation, armor of God, one, his might is his spirit in us, our power source, 610, Christ in us, put on the whole armor of God, all the Bible from a Pauline view to Tim, 2 colon 7, 2, loins gird about with truth, 614, 3, breastplate of righteousness, 614, us in Christ, 4, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, 615, 5, shield of faith, 616, 6, helmet of salvation, 617, 7, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, 617, 8, praying is the warrior's resource, 618, communication with commander, Asterisk Satan attacks the Bible, our truth, righteousness, our faith, our hope, our minds, and peace, but God has provided spiritual armor which will protect us. 6 1 Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. 2 Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, winky face. 3 That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. 4 And, ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Paul gives some more examples of relationships that require submission, children to parents and servants to masters. It is the fifth of God's Ten Commandments, but the first one with a promise, Deuteronomy. 5.16 If children obey their parents in the Lord, when they are in agreement with God, then they will live long on this earth. He said the same thing in Colossians. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord, Colossians 3 verse 20. It is right to obey our parents because God said we should. They want the best for them and will give them good advice and instruction. Training children to understand the Bible rightly divided begins in the home and then moves on to the workplace. Children need to know what God is doing now, so they will not get confused by mainstream Christianity. God is forming the body of Christ, in this dispensation of grace, to live in heaven. The pictures in our books just as God said, 3 and up, and God's secret, 9 and up, can help a young child understand the Bible when they are explained by the parents. Apparently, there were children in the assembly at Ephesus, let your children sit in church with you. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it, PROV. 22 6 Children who are trained well become good soldiers for Jesus Christ. Here is a great little poem about child training. Before the child has reached seven, have him taught the way to heaven. Better still the truth will thrive, if he knows it ere he's five. Best of all if at your knee, he learns the way before he's three. From the Christian Home by R.K. Campbell we can sing 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4 and help them memorize these salvation verses. Teach them the Pauline truth of the mystery so they will not be misinformed by Christian denominations. 
The first lesson a child needs to learn is to trust and obey those in authority. Parents need to let their children know that they love them. Proverbs teaches parents to raise children God's way, PROV. 1324, 1918, 2215, 2313, 14, 29 colon 15, 17. Discipline is intended to be used for the child's benefit. Fathers bring up children in the nurture and admonition of the word of the Lord. Fathers can delegate teaching the children about God to the mothers, but they have the final responsibility. Fathers keep your word to your children. Both parents need to help their children have respect for God and his word and memorize Bible verses. Awana clubs can help and parents can buy the KJV of the memorization books. Read a beginner's Bible to them, and when they are a little older let them read it to you. Pray with your children every night. We must make sure that we are godly examples to our children. We are not to be afraid to say we are sorry if we make a mistake. Paul said, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Colossians 3 verse 21. We can provoke our children to wrath by having unrealistic expectations of perfection from them when we know we are imperfect. We need to honor our own parents throughout our lives. Five servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of your heart, as unto Christ. Six not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, seven with good will, doing service, as to the Lord, and not to men, eight knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Nine and, ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. We go from the home to the place of business. These are the arenas where spiritual warfare goes on as we live out our Christian lives. Servants are to be obedient to their masters according to the flesh, their masters on earth, with fear and trembling, singleness of heart, as unto the Lord. Singleness of heart is a heart fixed or focused on serving Christ. We do not have slaves today, but we can apply this relationship to the employee and employer. They serve Christ first of all and will have a reward from the Lord regardless of their station in life. Again, we find sister verses in Colossians. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Colossians 3 verses 22-25 the servants are to serve their master slash employers enthusiastically as unto the Lord. Don't just do I service, only working when the master slash employer is watching, but with fear of God. Since every believer will receive a reward from God, the masters are to do the same thing, treat their employees as they would the Lord. Being a master or a servant is not what matters to God. Masters refrain from threatening your servant slash employees, knowing that your master, God, also is in heaven. God is the master of everyone. Christians should be the best workers on the job. Honest, not stealing, obeying the company rules, and going above what is expected of them. Likewise, employers are not to mistreat or be unfair to their employees in order to make more money. Treat employees right so you will be approved of God and rewarded. Penny-pinching materialism is idolatry. Anyone who cares more about their retirement plan on earth than they care about. Rewards in heaven have their priorities wrong. We will all give account to the Lord and be judged by him at his judgment seat of Christ, JSOC, for service done while on earth, whether it was good or bad, 2 Cor. 5.10, although salvation is a gift, 2 colon 8, 9, Rom. 5.17, rewards are earned and they glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Our, our rewards in heaven are important to God. God wants us to strive for rewards and is eager to award the right people with jobs of greater responsibility in heaven. 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Satan wants to hide the power of his might. Paul equips us like soldiers in this final section on our spiritual warfare against the dark satanic forces. Paul prayed that we might be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, 316, 17. We have the Son's spirit in us. 
When we got the Son, we got the Father also. It is the Father's power that worketh in us. 320. God and Father, in you all. 4 colon 6. To be effective soldiers for Christ, we must 1. Know our enemies. 2. Use the equipment supplied. And 3. Use the power and resource God provides. Satan attacks the Bible, our truth, righteousness, our faith, our hope, our minds, and peace, but God has provided spiritual armor which will protect us. There are eight pieces of armor, five defensive. Our offensive weapons are his might, the word of God, and prayer. The key to this section is to stand. Stand complete in Christ and in the truth of the mystery given by Christ to us through Paul. Being strong in the Lord means being strong in Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, while in the power of his might is his spirit in us, 316, 17, using his pure word. God has not given us a spirit of fear, Jesus Christ was valiant, he triumphed over Satan on the cross and his spirit is in us. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind, to Tim. 1 colon 7, Christ used strategy against Satan. Satan thought it would be easy to kill the Son of God because he became a little lower than the angels, PSA. 8 colon 5, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, Rom. 8 colon 3b, we handle the word of God wisely, but we never forget that the power is in the word of God itself. Paul said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, Rom. 1.16, it is the power of God to translate a sinner out of Adam and into the kingdom of his. Dear son, Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14. Paul prayed that the body of Christ members would have the same power that he had so that they could understand the Father and what he is doing. 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We are to put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is the entire counsel of the Word of God, whole Bible, from a Pauline perspective. Paul said, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things, 2 Tim. 2 colon 7, we need the whole armor. It is all spiritual. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, 2 Tim 3 16, 17. Do you think Satan is going to let such wealth and walk as Paul has been writing about go uncontested? We do not only need God's spiritual power, we also need to put on the whole armor of God so we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, Satan's devious cunning strategies, or tricks. We have eternal security in Christ so the only way Satan can trick us is if we believe a lie, not the right gospel, following man's denominations, instead of Pauline truth, thinking Peter is your apostle instead of Paul, or mixing Peter and Paul, saying the body of Christ began in Acts 2 instead of Acts 9, thinking we are spiritual Israel, etc. Once we understand the mystery and sound doctrine revealed to Apostle Paul understanding the rest of the Bible, prophecy, becomes easier. Paul uses stand three times in this chapter, 6, 11, 13, 14. Our goal is to obey God by standing. We must not be moved away from Paul's sound doctrine. We are to stand in mystery and to stay standing in the will of God in our position in Christ. We are complete in him, Colossians 2 verse 10. In our position in Christ, we are perfectly complete, we lack nothing. Satan wants to move us from our faith in Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, given to us through our apostle Paul. Paul says, if ye, Gentiles, continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I Paul am made a minister, Colossians 1 verse 23. We are to stand perfect and complete, Colossians 4 verse 12. Stand in Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Don't be moved from Christ's heavenly ministry to Christ's ministry on earth, from mystery to prophecy, from grace to law, from Paul to Peter, from the body of Christ to believing your spiritual Israel, from walking by faith to walking by sight, from the word of God to human wisdom, and from believing our blessed hope to thinking you're going through the tribulation. 
It is God's responsibility to provide the armor, preserve his word, but it is our responsibility to put it on, read, study, understand, and believe. Paul said, for though we walk in the flesh, physical body, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds winky face, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 2 Cor. 10 colon 3-5 The strongholds in Corinth were human wisdom by 10,000 instructors and false religious teaching by law-keeping Hebrews 2 Cor 11:22. Paul wanted them to take captive every thought that does not line up with Pauline doctrine and the rest of the Bible rightly divided. We cast down any thought that exalts itself against Christ according the revelation of the mystery. The battle is for our minds. Satan's strongholds are in the mines. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. 2 Cor. 11 colon 3. Don't judge what a preacher or teacher looks or sounds like. Because Satan is so sharp and tricky that he can transform himself into an angel of light. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. 2 Cor. 11.14, everything a person says must be compared with the King James Bible rightly divided. The key to Bible study is rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Tim 2.15, rightly dividing means to cut straight where God divides his word. This verse is not talking about dividing truth from error, but truth from truth. All the Bible is truth, but we have to divide God's word God's way. God divides Paul's 13 letters to Christ's heavenly group in Romans to Philemon from the rest of the Bible which is to his earthly people. Contained in the order of the books of the Bible is God's divine timeline of events and plan for heaven and earth. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone, the arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer, where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, Him lyrics by George Duffield, Jr., 1858. It was Christ that won over Satan first in the wilderness after 40 days of not eating or drinking. Christ in the wilderness quoted verses from the book of Deuteronomy and Satan was defenseless against the truth of God's word, Matt. 4 colon 1 11, Luke 4 verses 1 to 13. The Lord Jesus Christ skillfully and wisely quoted scripture when tempted by Satan in the wilderness. Jesus Christ depended on the Father and obeyed his word perfectly, he knew that the book was about him, PSA. 40 colon 6, 7, John 5 verse 39, Heb. 10 colon 7, he depended on the word of God to help him win the war against Satan. The Father led Jesus with his word, Christ led Paul with his word, now Paul's word leads us in the church. Therefore, when we stand against the wiles of the devil, being strong in sound doctrine and his power, we fight false doctrine with sound doctrine. But we must first know and understand the Bible so we can use our sword, the word, with intelligence. God wants us to use his word precisely as it is written. Christ has already won the war for us. We need to remember that we do not fight for victory, we fight from victory. We need his power and might, not our own. If we are not well versed in the word of God rightly divided, we may trust in our flesh and fall prey to Satan. An ignorant Christian can be used by the enemy. When we give place to the old man, we give place to the devil, for 27. Again, it is Christ's might and power that we need, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness, Colossians 1 verse 11. If we do not have his spirit in us, then we are not his. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his, Rom. 8 colon 9. If you have no desire to read his word, you may want to make sure you are his. Our desire for his word grows as we take the first step by reading Romans to Philemon. What is the difference between the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God in 617 and the power of his might? The power of his might is Christ's spirit in us which we received upon salvation. His spirit helps us to understand the word of God rightly divided so we can use his sword. His word is spiritually discerned, 1 Cor. 2 colon 9-16, 
His Spirit in us enlightens us to the truth of His spiritual word. 12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Satan doesn't want us to know who our real enemies in the world and in high places are. The Christian life is not a playground, it is a battleground. Our warfare is not against other people of flesh and blood, but against the children of disobedience that are empowered by the prince of the power of the air, 2 colon 1 3. Our warfare is spiritual. We fight or wrestle against the evil forces behind lost and ignorant humans, 1 Cor. 1437, 38, the evil angelic princes, Satan and his minions. In the second heaven is Satan the prince of the power of the air and his fallen angels. Behind our human adversaries are the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. The fallen angels that currently reign in second heaven are not looking forward to the body of Christ being raised up to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, 2 colon 6, and taking their place. Principalities are evil princes such as the prince of Persia in Dan, 10.20. We know that there has been rebellion in heaven and on earth and that God is saving two groups, Peter's and Paul's to live in two realms of his kingdom, heaven and earth. The enemy's attack is false doctrine. Satan has a policy of evil for this dispensation, he wants to conceal it. The mystery displays the fact that Satan was not as wise as he thought, he sealed his own doom when he crucified Christ, 1 Cor. 2 colon 6-8, Colossians 2 verse 15. Satan has always opposed God. Satan is still active doing his worst, and we are in his territory. Satan's fall is recorded in Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 17, Ezek 28 colon 11 19, Luke 10 verse 18. He works spiritually to make people follow false teachers slash preachers who teach false doctrine and not what Paul said. Satan doesn't want you to read the Bible and know what God is doing now. He wants us not to be purely Pauline, but to mix Peter and Paul. He wants you to think that the body of Christ began in Acts 2, not in Acts 9. Christ made it seem as if he was weak so Satan would allow the crucifixion of the Lord of glory, 1 Cor. 2 colon 8, Christ lured Satan into killing him, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you, 2 Cor. 13 colon 4, Satan has a plot, but God has a plan. God saved Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus and began a new dispensation of grace. He began forming a new group of people, the body of Christ, to live in heaven. Satan exclaimed, what? This was not prophesied in the Bible. Satan was astonished and furious. God had kept a secret mystery. God caught Satan in his own craftiness, one core. 319, and proved that he was much wiser. Satan wants to thwart God's plan so that no one knows what God is doing today. He has corrupted the modern Bibles and he is very busy in the churches today making sure that false doctrine is taught. He wants to keep people blinded from the truth. We don't fight against humans, but against the evil forces behind them. Satan is the god of this world not because he possesses the earth, but because the world has chosen to follow and worship Satan. The Creator, Jesus Christ, actually possesses both heaven and earth. However, Satan has deceived the world into not believing God. The Bible is a true book about how God restores the rebellion in heaven and on earth. Satan is propagating the lie program. Paul called Satan a prince, the prince of the power of the air, 2 colon 2, in the second heaven. Satan stole the hearts of the angels from God in a similar fashion as Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. 2 Sam 15 colon 6 from his father King David. Heaven and earth are currently under Satan's influence. There was rebellion in heaven. Satan caused Adam and Eve to rebel against God, so there was rebellion on earth. Satan acquired the dominion of the earth by default when he tricked Eve and her husband with her. Genesis 3 verse 6. Satan offered the kingdoms of the world to Christ. Matt. 4 colon 8, Luke 4 verse 5, but Christ did not take the bribe, because it wasn't God's way. Christ won back his thrones in heaven and earth on the cross. The heavens are not clean in God's sight, Job 15 verse 15. God does not trust those angels the stars are not pure in his sight, Job 15 verse 25. 
The saints in Job are the angels also known in Job as the sons of God and the morning stars. Knowing what God said in Job is part of putting on the whole armor of God. We need to know our enemy. God spoke to Job about the rebellion in heaven. I will quote the entire passage, but don't think that it is part of Ephesians chapter 6. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof, when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut up the sea with doors, when it brake forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? One third of the angels were persuaded by Satan to join him and rebel against God, Revelation 12 verse 4. The rebellion broke out like the water gushes out when the membrane breaks just before a baby is born. When I made the cloud the garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, lake of fire, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. God stopped the rebellion by creating the lake of fire for any angels that rebelled. Matt. 25 colon 41 angels do not like darkness so god made the second heaven dark and set a bound around it contained it fenced it in the fallen angels that procreated with women before the flood are held in chains of darkness and hell second peter 2 verse 4 jude 14 hast thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it it is turned as clay to the seal and they stand as a garment and from the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken, God will shake the heaven and the earth once more in the future to rid them of all evil, ISA. 1313, Hag. 2 colon 6, Heb. 1226, There is no light of God for the wicked and Satan will be broken. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? Job 38 verses 1 to 15, 22, 23. God has stored up treasures of the hail he will use during Jacob's trouble against Antichrist and his forces at Christ's second coming. Satan and his fallen angels will be cast out of heaven in the middle of the tribulation, Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9. Satan will then walk about like a false lion of the tribe of Judah seeking whom he can devour, 1 Peter 5 verse 8. During the tribulation, some of the bad fallen angels will change their minds and not want to do bad things anymore, Satan will be furious and cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground, and stamped upon them, Dan. 8.10, Jesus Christ shall return with his angels at his second coming and put down the rebellion on earth, Jude 14, Matt. 16.27, 2 Thess. 1 colon 7, Adam and Eve failed against Satan in the garden by misquoting God's word, but Jesus succeeded in the wilderness by precisely quoting God's word. Christ had faith in the Father. Much of the darkness of this world is spiritual ignorance of God's word and Satan is behind it. When the Catholic Church tried to keep the word from the common man, we had the Dark Ages from 500 to 1500 AD, about 1000 years. The Catholic Church had the inferior Vulgate Bible recorded in a dead language, Latin, which few people spoke. Now we have his word and people don't read it. The real enemy, Satan, is merely using flesh and blood to obstruct the Lord's work. Satan means adversary, and devil, which sounds like evil, means slanderer, accuser. Satan is the ruler of the present world system. It is not our responsibility to fix the evil world system. Our responsibility is to share the gospel of the grace of God, because the gospel is the only thing that can save a soul and change mankind's heart. Satan's long warfare against the work of God will end in the lake of fire, Revelation 20 verse 15. Satan knows that God is working to build sound doctrine into our inner man. We battle darkness with light. 5 colon 8, Rom. 13 12. He is the ruler of darkness and uses darkness, ignorance and lies to further his cause. 2 Cor. 4 colon 1 4. Give no place to the devil. 4 27. This means no ground, no opportunity, no place unprotected or vulnerable where Satan could get a toehold. We fight false doctrine with sound doctrine, 2 Tim, 
4 colon 3, Titus 1 verse 9. Satan wants to deceive, 4 14, and divide believers, but we need to recognize that and not let him. If another member in the body says a few things that we don't agree with, we can forgive them. If we agree 95% of the time and they are a King James Bible believer, we are blessed to know them. Be quick to forgive others because we were so undeserving, yet God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you, 432. Paul said, being reviled, we bless, 1 Cor. 412. Paul wants the body of Christ to be like an army that is able to stand against all evil. Satan is trying to conceal the mystery and we need to make it known. 13 Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. After we take to us the whole armor we are able to withstand in the evil day, and to do all to stand. We are just asked to stand in Pauline truth, 6 11, 13, 14, to be steadfast, unmovable, 1 Cor. 1558. We are under grace, not the law, Rom. 614. On either side of our dispensation of grace is the law which Israel failed to keep but which believing Israel will be able to keep under the future new covenant with his spirit in them in their glorified bodies, Dan. 12 colon 1, 2, Ezek. 36 colon 24 dash 28. Mystery has interrupted prophecy. The Bible is laid out, prophecy, mystery, prophecy. The gospel of the kingdom was preached before our apostle Paul was saved in Acts 9 and the gospel of the kingdom, Matt, 2400 hours 14, will be preached again after our rapture. Paul preached the gospel of grace, Acts 20 verse 24. We withstand Satan's lies with God's truth. Calvinism is an example of Satan's lies. It mixes Peter and Paul, which God wants us to keep separate. For the body of Christ, the evil day began with Paul's salvation in Acts 9 and continues with the apostasy of the Christian church from his doctrine. All in Asia turned away from his teaching, 2 Tim 1.15, for humanity the evil day began with the fall of Adam, Rom. 5.12, Paul lists eight pieces of spiritual armor. We need spiritual weapons to fight spiritual enemies, Satan and his minions. Each piece of armor helps us to know how the enemy will attack us. We have his power, F. 3 colon 14 dash 21, and his word. We can call on God for help in prayer. We have several pieces of defensive armor. But there is no protection for the back, because we are to stand, not turn our backs and run away. We can use the word of God rightly divided to defeat Satan. Paul was most likely chained to a different Roman soldier every six hours and used them for this illustration to us. The body of Christ is to be one cohesive army, one team working together. 14 Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, Satan attacks our truth and doesn't want us to know that we receive the free gift of his son's righteousness when we believe, Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26, 4 colon 1 dash 25, 5 colon 1, 17. We are to stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Our essential core, center of our stability, and reproductive function are protected with God's truth. We already have on the breastplate of righteousness which we received upon salvation which protects our hearts, the seed of our souls. Truth is Christ's sound doctrine, his word to us through Paul. Christ's word to us in the body of Christ is Romans to Philemon. That is our truth. Paul shared the true revelation he received from Christ, 415, 5 colon 9. Galatians 1 verses 11 and 12. Paul said that he spoke by manifestation of the truth, reveling of the truth. He shared the sound doctrine Christ gave him. Therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, give up, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them, 2 Cor. For colon 1 4, the glorious gospel is being justified by faith. We need to know that the breastplate of righteousness is his imputed righteousness, us in Christ, Rom. 5 17, 2 Cor. 5 21, Phil. 3 colon 9, anyone who has trusted in the blood of Jesus Christ, 
1.7.2.13 for full payment of their sins and his resurrection has Christ's righteousness imputed to them. 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Satan does not want us to be prepared to share the true gospel for anyone to understand justification by faith which is imputed righteousness and peace with God. We should be prepared to share the gospel of peace with God with the lost, to know it and be able to articulate it before we say anything else. Rom. 3 colon 21 dash 26, 4 colon 3 dash 5, 24, 25, 5 colon 1, 2, 1 core. 15 colon 3, 4. God is offering peace to anyone who believes what Christ has done for them. F. 1 colon 7, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Rom. 5 colon 1, 2. We are saved when we do not just believe some information but decide in our hearts to believe the gospel. 1 core. 15 colon 3, 4. And receive the gift of righteousness. Rom. 517 and stand accepted in the beloved 1 colon 6 and complete in him colossians 2 verse 10 all god has ever wanted since creation is to be believed 16 above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked satan attacks our faith that can quench fiery darts above all we are to take the shield of faith faith is paramount without it we are not saved the shield of faith is first of all what Christ did for us on Calvary and second the doctrine he gave us through Paul. We believe the one faith, 4 colon 5, also called the faith, 3 12, 4 13. The faith is the mystery of what Jesus Christ from heaven revealed to us in the body of Christ through our apostle Paul. Our faith is increased by reading and believing God's word rightly divided. We are under grace, not the law, Rom. 6.14 if we put ourselves under the law we have condemnation, reviving of sin, and discouragement. Fiery darts are difficult circumstances, tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Rom. 835. Fiery darts are also the mental attitudes, sins, actions, or works of the flesh designed to move us from Pauline truth, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Gal. 5 colon 19 dash 21. An ambassador that loves this world or is too wrapped up in the affairs of this life is ineffective as a servant of the Lord. 2 Tim. 2 colon 4. 410. We can deal with difficult situations and quench lies, doubts, unbelief, gossip, and confusion when we understand his word to and about us, as well as the rest of the Bible. The fiery darts shot against Pauline believers are false words. PSA. 64 colon 3, 4. The liars say we lie and call right wrong and wrong right. The shield of the Roman soldier was huge, almost like standing behind a curved door. The Roman soldiers would often lock their shields with fellow soldiers in battle and make a wall of protection. Paul says that with the shield of faith ye, plural you, the whole outfit, the army of the body of Christ, will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, the mean wicked thoughts aimed at us by ignorant brethren who are enticed by the enemy. When the adversary casts a fiery dart or false thought say, I refuse to have that thought because it is not what God said in his word. We help each other out when helping a lost unbeliever to be saved or ignorant brethren to understand the mystery. The mystery is that God is forming the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace to live in the heavenly places. United we stand like a mighty army. Remember, it is Satan that has been casting doubt on God's word from the beginning saying, Yeah, hath God said, ye, both, shall not eat of every tree of the garden? the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat, Genesis 3 verses 1 and 6. But with sound doctrine in the right Bible, we are protected individually and corporately. Like a mighty army moves the church of God, Christians, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before.
Onward, Christian Soldiers, hymn lyrics by Sabine Beringold, 1865. 17. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Satan attacks our minds and doesn't want us to know our hope. Satan doesn't want us to believe that the King James Bible is perfect. Like God, the helmet is our salvation at the rapture. Whenever we see the word salvation, we have to ask saved from what? It is not always saved from our sins. A helmet is to protect the mind. The helmet is to know in our minds the certainty of the blessed hope, our redemption, our pre-tribulation rapture. We are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, 1 Thess. 417. Paul put on the helmet of salvation when the mob wanted to tear him in pieces in Ephesus during the uproar, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which riseth the dead. 2 Cor. 1 9. Those who wrongly divide can be wrong about the rapture and overthrow the faith of some. 2 Tim. 2 16 18. We should not give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 1 Tim. 4 colon 1. We remind ourselves that we will be saved out of the present evil world. Gal. 1 colon 4, 1 Thess. 1 10, 5 colon 9, Titus 2 verse 13. We can endure almost anything if we have the hope of being raptured and having eternity together with God. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that, whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do, 1 Thess. 5 colon 8-11 When we know and remind ourselves that whether we are alive or dead we will be raptured and taken up to heaven in glorified bodies that will last for eternity, then we can withstand in the evil day when Satan is against us. But the Lord Jesus has not left us alone, his spirit is in us. Ignorance of the word of God is one of Satan's favorite ploys. Daily reading of the Bible rightly divided can give us a sound mind and help protect us from mental illness and Alzheimer's. Satan targets the mind. He likes to conceal Pauline truth, hinder it, and to divide believers. When we read, study, and believe his word, we trust what God said with our heart. God has preserved his word. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. PSA 12 colon 6, 7 The grass withereth, the flower for death, but the word of our God shall stand forever. ISA 40 colon 8 Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matt 2400 hours 35 Originals don't exist, they became dust but God made perfect copies. The King James Bible is a perfect sharp two-edged sword, while other modern Bibles are like a penknife. We can't do spiritual warfare if we don't use our perfect final authority, the King James Bible. It is impossible to rightly divide the word of truth using a modern English Bible. If someone is using another Bible, the truth will be obscured. Those Bibles have been corrupted by Satan's pawns. The NIV is missing 16 entire verses. Matthew 17 verse 21, 18 verse 11, 23 14. Mark 7 verse 16, 9 verse 44, 9 verse 46, 11 verse 26, 15 28. Luke 17 verse 36, 23 verse 17, John 5 verse 4. Acts 8 verse 37, 15 verse 34, 24 verse 7, 28 colon 29. Romans 16 verse 24 and 1 John 5 verse 7, this verse is missing words. Unlike a material sword, the word of God itself has power. It is living and never loses its sharpness. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Heb. 4.12 Any fencer knows that we parry or block blows, but to hit the target we lead with our mind. We focus our mind on it then we lunge piercing the heart of our opponent. This is how it is with doing God's will. We do not tell a person this or that, we decide to let them see the words that have the power to save their souls for themselves. 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, because then the truth is between them and God, the author of his word. We do the same when sharing right division. 
We use the most important verses comparing Acts 3 verse 21 with Romans 16 verses 25 and 26. Compare Matt 2028 and 1 Tim 2 colon 6. Compare Matt 28 colon 19 and 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1. We help them see the two ministries, two ministers, and two messages of Christ in Gal. 2 7 9. We share that Paul is the one apostle to the body of Christ during the dispensation of the grace of God, focusing on the important verses Acts 9 verses 15 and 16, 13 38, 39, 22 7 16, 26 16 18, Rom 11 11 13, 25, 1 Corinthians 2 verses 6 to 8, 15 3, 4, 2 Cor 5 1, 21, Gal, 1 colon 1, 11, 12, 2 colon 2, 7 to 9, F, 1 10, 2 colon 11 dash 18, 3 colon 1 dash 9, Phil, 3 colon 9, Colossians 1 verses 13 and 14, 25, 26, 1, Thess, 1 10, 4 colon 15 dash 17, 5 colon 9, 2 Thess, 2 colon 1, 1 Tim, 1 colon 3, 15, 16, 2 Tim, 2 colon 7, 15, Titus 2 verses 11 to 14, File, 118, we get right to the main issues, showing them how to separate the instruction for God's heavenly people in Romans to Philemon from the rest of the Bible which is to the believers on earth, but for our learning, Rom. 15 colon 4. We are fighting or wrestling Satan and his minions who want to keep the unbelievers lost and the believers ignorant. We remember that we were lost and ignorant too so we have compassion for others. God's living spirit in us uses the living word of God to do the work of God. To understand the Bible, we need three things. 1. To be saved by faith so we can have his spirit in us. 2. To become King James Bible believers by faith. And 3. To obey God by rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Tim 2.15 Rightly dividing is not optional, it is the only way to understand the Bible. Faith is not a leap in the dark, but trusting what God says after we have all the facts. After we do all the research on the textual issue. We know that God promised to preserve his word, so then we just need to know which Bible is the preserved perfect word of God. After we have done the research, the last little piece that remains is to put our faith in it. I was a King James Bible user for years before I became a believer. You can do the research on the internet or read my article on why I use the King James Bible in the appendix of God's secret because I have done the research for you. How do we use his sword? When someone slanders Christ's doctrine to the body of Christ through Apostle Paul then we fight Satan's lies with God's truth and quote the right verses. Many wrongly dividing brethren will be defenseless against the truth just as Satan was against Christ in the wilderness therefore they will resort to name calling and falsely call the Pauline believers names such as Hypers, Acts 9, not Acts 2, and dry cleaners, dry spiritual baptism, not wet. Some people with unbelieving hearts and no real knowledge of the scriptures will be deceived by them. The sword of the Spirit, the Word of God can cut and convict their hearts of their sins, as it did us. The other edge of the sword will then cut to see the truth of His Son's death for our sins, burial, and resurrection. We keep studying His Word so we can help others. The main thing is to renew our minds daily by attentively reading His Word, 1 Tim. For 13, dot, 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching therein too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, Satan doesn't want saints to know how to pray effectively. Paul has prayed marvelously. Twice in this letter that the Ephesian saints and the faithful in Christ Jesus, all other believers in Christ, will have spiritual understanding and be able to comprehend what God said through him in Ephesians. We must pray the same thing for people to understand and believe the gospel and the mystery truth that we share. We can ask our commander-in-chief, the Lord Jesus Christ, to help us as we watch for opportunities to save souls and help ignorant brethren, like we used to be, to understand the mystery as we try to love the lost and the stubborn. We can persevere in prayer making supplications, requests, in the Spirit. We are to pray to God in the Spirit. The Spirit helps us to pray, Rom. 826. We are to watch for opportunities to pray for all saints. Because if a fellow soldier falls, Satan has just gained more ground and we want the opposite to happen. Praying is hard work. It is so easy to get distracted and give up. 
We are to persevere, pray without ceasing. 1 Thess 5.17 We need to cultivate a strong prayer life, copying the prayers of our pattern. 1 Tim 1.16, Epaphras from Coloss, is another great example of how to pray. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Colossians 4 verse 12. When we pray we tell God that we understand what his orders are and that our duty is to carry them out for his glory and grace. It is very helpful to analyze and copy how Paul prayed. 19 And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, 20 For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly, as I ought to speak. Satan wants to shut the mouth of God's ambassadors and convince all that only men can be ambassadors eliminating 50% of his competition. Satan doesn't want us to share the gospel or for anyone to understand the mystery. Paul's prayers were intelligent reflecting what God said in his word, responsible, mature, considerate of others, and according to God's will. Now Paul asked for prayer for himself, that he may open his mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel while in bonds. Paul is going to continue to serve the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and do his duty as an ambassador until he is called home before the war, 1 Thess. 1 10, 5 9. This world is not our home. Satan thought that he could discourage Paul and have him locked up so he would shut up. But Paul continued preaching and many were saved in Caesar's palace and one Zymus and others. The saints in Rome probably paid for his rented house, food, and other necessities. We can also ask other saints to pray for us to boldly and faithfully proclaim the mystery of the gospel so we can be effective ambassadors for Christ. 1 Cor 15 colon 3, 4, 2 Cor 521F 3:1-9 We are to do what our pattern Paul did. We should pray for our pastors and teachers and one another that we may make known the message of grace. We are to pray for others to be saved and for saints to come to know the truth. Paul wants to have boldness to preach this message that Satan hates. The Jews retaliated against Paul because they were blind to the fact that God had other instructions for his heavenly people that did not include water baptism or circumcision. We are all to spread this truth for we are all ambassadors of reconciliation. 2 Cor 5 colon 18 20 Our duty is to speak plainly and boldly to others, for God's will is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 1 Tim 2 colon 4. As we represent our Lord in heaven, we need to be effective ambassadors for Christ. We need all hands on deck. In this late hour of the dispensation of grace when we are so close to the rapture, everyone who has been enlightened to Pauline truth, young, old, male, female, need to help make all men see the fellowship of the mystery. 3 colon 9. God wants all on board. We want everyone to be saved and function the way God intends them to and to have something of value at the JSOC. Every time a child of disobedience is saved, Christ has plundered or spoiled Satan of another soul. Everyone in the true church, the body of Christ, is saved. But in many other denominational churches, there are many unsaved people who may believe they are saved. In summary, there are eight pieces of armor. Prayer and the power of his might are included, because without his power and might we have nothing, we know nothing, and we are nothing. God talks to us through his word, and we talk to God in prayer. We should all be faithful beloved brothers and sisters. 21 But that ye also may know my affairs, and how I do, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, 22 Whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Like Tychicus who delivered the letter to the Ephesians and the letter to the Colossians along with one Zymus we should be faithful ministers. He was most likely the amanuensis who wrote down the words Paul dictated. He once traveled with Paul from Corinth and also assisted Paul on several errands. At the end of his ministry, Paul sent him to Ephesus so that Timothy could come to him in Rome, to Tim. For 12, Paul told the Ephesians that Tychicus would let them know how he was doing personally so that their hearts might be comforted. It will comfort them to know that Paul is doing well on house arrest and that he may soon be released and able to come to Ephesus, 1 Tim, 1 colon 3. 
Paul wants them in return to tell Tychicus about themselves so he can tell Paul how they were doing. Paul did not include much about his present personal affairs because it is not about us, it's about what Jesus Christ has done for us. 23 Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 24 Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. In his farewell, Paul says peace to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul can salute us from the Father and the Lord because he is their spokesman to the body of Christ, just like Moses was God's spokesman to Israel. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ extend peace to them and love which comes by faith. Paul adds his salutation. The sincere believers are purely Pauline for Christ gave us our instructions through his one apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11 verse 13. He wants peace among the members of the body of Christ and the love and faith that God has. Paul wants unity among the members and for us to work together as a team, standing together in the truth against Satan, spreading the truth of the mystery. Right doctrine leads to right thinking which results in right conduct and a useful life for God with rewards in heaven. How do we love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity? We follow Apostle Paul. If we truly love Jesus Christ, we listen to him that Jesus sent, Acts 28 verse 18. Jesus sent Paul. When we get to heaven, Paul may be God's five-star general to us in the body of Christ. When we get to heaven, Paul is going to be General Pattern, not General Patton. After the rapture, it's gonna be hell on earth. Parenting tips. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Parenting tips. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians 6 verse 1. Put some plaques with scripture around your home and in their room. Teach children to respect and love God. Speak about God a little at a time as you spend time with them each day. Deuteronomy 6 colon 4 dash 9. Look them in the eyes and smile at them. Hug often. Teach them to sing the gospel. 1 core. 15 colon 3, 4, like a little jingle. Pray with your children every night before they go to bed. Read a children's Bible to them, then when they are older they can read it to you. A child should learn to obey their parents cheerfully and immediately. Let the children do chores in the home. Awana clubs can help the children to learn to memorize scripture. The books are available in the KJV. Follow what God said about child rearing in Proverbs. Apply the rod of correction to the seed of understanding quickly when necessary until they are old enough to obey you out of love. Parents should not have unrealistic expectations, demanding children to be perfect when no human is. Sometimes children are just immature or childish which does not warrant punishment. Win their heart. Do not spank in anger but only discipline for the reason of lovingly correcting them. Not to spank is to not obey or follow the Bible. Don't stop just because they cry. When they are older you can do more verbal admonishing or direction. Just say, that is not right, because they know that is true. Rejecting or neglecting a child, or lack of loving correction or discipline, is just as bad as a harsh or unjust discipline. Rebellion needs to be dealt with. We want children to learn there are consequences to our actions and behavior. You are to nurture and teach them, so homeschool if you can. The blasphemy of the Holy Ghost and the body of Christ. Paul did not begin his provoking ministry to make the Jews jealous of him until after Israel had stumbled at the cross, fell in Acts 7, and was cast away, Rom. 11 11, 12, 15. Paul and other body of Christ members had Israel sign gifts during the second half of Acts. The nation of Israel was cast away for committing the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, Matt. 12 31, 32. This blasphemy could not be committed until after the Holy Ghost came on Pentecost, Acts 2 verse 4. Israel was given a one-year extension of mercy to accept Jesus Christ as their Messiah. While on earth Christ had asked the Father to give Israel one more year and also on the cross he asked the Father to forgive them because they did not know he was the Prince, their Messiah, Luke 13 verses 6 to 9, Luke 23 verse 34, Dan 9 25. 26. Peter preached, after the healing of the lame man which indicated that Israel could still be saved, in Solomon's porch, where no Gentiles were allowed. Ye men of Israel, ye denied the Holy One and the just, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And now, 
Brethren, I would that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things, which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Acts 3 verses 12 to 18. Peter asked the Jews to repent, change their minds about the fact that Jesus of Nazareth was their Messiah. Acts 3 verses 19 to 21. At the end of that year, Stephen recited Israel's history from Abraham until Messiah before the Sanhedrin. He said the rulers of Israel resisted the Holy Ghost and were betrayers and murderers of the just one, Acts 7 verses 51 and 52. Christ told us in the parable of the vineyard what the religious leaders of Israel thought. This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance, and slew him, Matt. 21 38, 39. Israel and Pilate put the Son of Man to death on the cross, but it was by predetermined counsel of the Godhead, PSA. 2 colon 1 dash 3, Acts 2 verse 23. Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God, Acts 7 verse 56. Jesus Christ was ready to judge and make war, Revelation 19 verse 11, and to make his enemies, the unbelieving Jews, his footstool, PSA. 110 when the Jewish leaders stoned Stephen speaking by the Holy Ghost that was the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. But instead of coming in vengeance the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Saul of Tarsus and made Paul the apostle of the Gentiles, Rom. 1113, and ushered in a completely new dispensation of grace to the Gentiles, all people since Jews are considered uncircumcised today Acts 7 verse 51, to save another group of people the body of Christ. It is important to know that the Gentiles, Rom. 1113, 17, 25, not the body of Christ are grafted into the olive tree and have the opportunity to receive the Son of God's Spirit in them by simply believing in His sacrifice for their sins and resurrection, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4, Gal, 3 14, 16, 4 colon 6, 2 Cor, 5 21. In all thy work, O Lord, thou didst. By Watchman Nay, circa 1950, music by John C. Hatton, 1793. In all thy work, O Lord, thou didst. At Calvary's cross once come to rest. Yet thou art working still today but in another form expressed. Thy saving power thou still dost show, thou still dost speak, enlighten, guide, thou and the Spirit in one stream sweep many in thy living tide. Through him thy power is not withheld, through him thy working does not cease, thou still dost comfort and command, encourage, strengthen, and release. Since thou art with the Spirit one, his coming means that thou hast come, and his indwelling is thine own. Since thou the Spirit hast become, he executes within my heart all thy desires and thy demands. As for the Father here on earth, thou hast performed all his commands. By knowing him we know thyself, obeying him we thee obey, allowing him ourselves to fill. We're filled with thee, O wondrous way, thou art not far away in he then, leaving us here alone, apart. But thou art still on earth, how grand thou livest right within my heart. Watchman Nay, November 4th, 1903 to May 30th, 1972, was a Chinese church leader and Christian teacher who worked in China during the 20th century. His evangelism was influenced by the Plymouth Brethren. During his 30 years of ministry, Nay published many books expounding the Bible. Adapted from Wikipedia, he established churches throughout China and held many conferences to train Bible students and church workers. Following the Communist Revolution, Ne was persecuted and imprisoned for his faith and spent the last 20 years of his life in prison. When he died a note under his pillow said, Christ is the Son of God who died for the redemption of sinners and resurrected after three days. This is the greatest truth in the universe. I die because of my belief in Christ. Watchman Nay. In the spring of 1920, when Nay was 17, Doryu was invited to hold 10 days of revival meetings in the Church of Heavenly Peace in Fuzhou. After Nay's mother attended these meetings, she was moved to apologize to her son for a previous incident of unjust punishment. Nay so impressed by this that he determined to attend the next day's evangelistic meeting to see what was taking place there. Nay's testimony, after returning from the meeting, on the evening of April 28, 1920, 
I was alone in my room, struggling to decide whether or not to believe in the Lord. At first I was reluctant, but as I tried to pray I saw the magnitude of my sins and the reality and efficacy of Jesus as the Savior. As I visualized the Lord's hands stretched out on the cross, they seemed to be welcoming me, and the Lord was saying, I am waiting here to receive you. Realizing the effectiveness of Christ's blood in cleansing my sins and being overwhelmed by such love, I accepted him there. Previously I had laughed at people who had accepted Jesus, but that evening the experience became real for me and I wept and confessed my sins, seeking the Lord's forgiveness. As I made my first prayer I knew joy and peace such as I had never known before. Light seemed to flood the room and I said to the Lord, Oh, Lord, you have indeed been gracious to me. Nay began to write and publish at a very early age. In 1923, he began to publish the magazine The Present Testimony, and in 1925, he started another magazine entitled The Christian. This is when Nay changed his name from Nai Shutsu to Nai Tushing, English translation, Watchman Nay. At age 21, Nay established the first local church in Sichuan, Malaysia while visiting his mother, who had moved there from China. In 1926, Nay established a local church in Shanghai, which became the center of his work in China. By 1932, Nay's practice of meeting as local churches spread throughout China, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. He maintained this pattern until his imprisonment. In February 1934, Nay gave a series of talks in which he expounded the practice of the local churches, stating that in the Bible, the church is never divided into denominated based on a teaching or doctrine. Nay was interested in recovering Christian truth that had been forgotten. In 1938, Nay traveled to Europe and gave messages upon his return, Nay gave a conference on the body of Christ. According to Nay, my first turn was to know Christ, and my second turn was to know his body. To know Christ is only half of what the believers need. The believers also must know the body of Christ. Christ is the head of the body. Nay reorganized his brother's pharmaceutical factory and employed some church members. In 1946, Ruth Lee, Witness Lee, and Wang Peace helped his church in Shanghai grow to 1,000 members. Some of his books, The Spiritual Man, 1928, translated in 1969. Concerning Our Missions, 1939, translated in 1942. The Song of Songs, 1945, translated in 1970. The Breaking of the Outer Man and the Release of the Spirit, 1950. The Normal Christian Life, 1957, translated in 1965. The Normal Christian Church Life, 1938, translated in 1965. Sit, Walk, Stand, 1957, translated in 1971. What Shall This Man Do? 1961, translated in 1975. Love Not the World, 1951, translated in 1968. A Living Sacrifice, 1932, translated in 1950. Authority and Submission, 1941, translated in 1950, The Spirit of the Gospel, 1949, translated in 1971, God's Work, 1940, translated in 1967, Back to the Cross, 1931, translated in 1956, Grace for Grace, 1949, translated in 1968, How to Study the Bible, 1956, translated in 1968. Practical Issues of This Life, 1938, translated in 1970. About the Author, Misley of Impudity, Closer, Walk, F's Redivi, Olympuity Prophecy, Timur, Chapter 6, Prof. D. N. Rightly, Lisiano, Spiritual Warfare, Marian Manley is blessed to have been saved in 1990 and rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, for several years. She only wishes she would have been saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, 1 Timothy 2 verse 4, sooner. But now, she is making up for lost time. She is recording and sharing what she learns so others do not need to waste time as she did. She has been enjoying daily personal Bible study, reading through the Bible, and memorizing scripture for the past 32 years. It is so thrilling when we understand what God said. A married retired nurse midwife. She has devoted the rest of her life to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. F. 
3 colon 9. She has been teaching the Bible for more than 20 years. Her rightly dividing Bible studies are available on Facebook and YouTube at Truth Be Told. Her website is MarianneManley.com. Her joy after understanding the Bible better led her to edify the body of Christ by writing God's secret. Then Romans, a concise commentary. 1 Corinthians, a commentary. 2 Corinthians, a commentary in Galatians, a commentary, Ephesians, a commentary, and Philippians, Colossians, Philemon Commentary, and Treasure Hunt Volume 2, Paul's Prison Epistles, Why Was the Earth Without Form, Void, and Dark? Just as God said for children, the certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians Commentary. Paul's Pastoral Epistles, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon Commentary, Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Paul's T Books, Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3. Missed the Rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrew, How to Be Saved Made Simple, and the Rightly Dividing Study Guides. Many people have all her books. Other books by Marianne Manley. God's Secret A Primer with Pictures for How to Rightly Divide the Word of Truth on Amazon.com in Black and White Edition and in Spanish El Secreto de Dios. Rightly Dividing Galatians Study Guide. Rightly Dividing 2 Corinthians Study Guide. Rightly Dividing 1 Corinthians Study Guide. Rightly Dividing Romans Study Guide Romans, a concise commentary, also in a black and white edition 1 Corinthians, a commentary 2 Corinthians, a commentary Galatians, a commentary Ephesians, a commentary Philippians, Colossians, Philemon Commentary The Certainty of the Pre-Tribulation Rapture 1 and 2 Thessalonians, Paul's Pastoral Epistles, Timothy Letters Titus, and Philemon Commentary. Treasure Hunt Volume 1, Commentary Only Romans to Galatians. Treasure Hunt Volume 2, Commentary Only on Paul's Prison Epistles. Treasure Hunt Volume 3, Commentary on Paul's Tea Books. Why Was the Earth Without Form, Void, and Dark? Just as God Said. Acts of the Apostles Commentary Part 1, 2, 3. Missed the Rapture? Read this commentary on Hebrews. How to be saved made simple, this booklet is perfect for our lost loved ones. Could God have a 7,000 year plan for mankind? Also in black and white in AD 34 the year Jesus died for all, same content as could God, in 9 by 6 size. The author may be contacted by email at mariannemanley at sbcglobal.net. Please visit her website, www.mariannemanley.com, free.pdf files. Follow her on Facebook at facebook.com slash marianne.manley.7 and God's Secret Facebook page at facebook.com slash Primer with pictures. Find her on YouTube, just type in her name and find her teaching the Bible a chapter at a time on Truth Be Told YouTube channel or 858-273-2049.